Well, case swapping's what you want to do with your Alienware Aurora there, bud. I know from experience, dude. You know what I mean? No, you don't. Well, not me personally, but I got a couple buddies with R10s and R11. Said it was no problem. Well, not me personally, but a guy I know. Got it on. Woo-wee! <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. No, 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 they didn't. But you can imagine what it'd be like if they did, right? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Everybody on? Good! Great! Grand! Wonderful! Just because you can do something, doesn't mean that you should. Alrighty guys, so my community over here at Gamer Heaven is absolutely blowing up. I've seen several comments saying case swapping might be the thing to do with the R9, R10, R11, and R12. They, they all share that relatively controversial case back there. And there are three primary reasons why anybody would want to change their case, whether it's a pre-built to another pre-built or a pre-built to a custom or just building a custom PC and you're picking a case. And those three reasons are heat. Does the case dissipate heat out of the box? Not very well on the R9, R10, R11, and R12. The next one would be size. Is it big enough or small enough for you to fit into your desk setup to where not only does it look good, but also when you're working on it, is it easy for you to get to the components? In my opinion, it fits my setup quite nicely, but it is a pain in the rectum when I go in there to work on it. And last but not least is looks, appearance. This is totally subjective. Everyone sees beauty differently. I personally think the R9 through R12 look fantastic. I like the look of the, the jet turbine design, but hey, maybe that's one of the reasons you wanna swap this case for something else. In which case I kind of have to ask you why you would buy this particular pre-built when there are other pre-builds like HP Omens, Lenovo's gaming line, NZXT, CyberPower, iBuyPower, and all of these for the most part have the 30 series cards in stock as well as the newest generation Intel and AMD products. Processors. Now I'm going to quickly cover how you can fix these three problems that I just mentioned without having to do a full case swap, which we're going to get to in a little bit, isn't as easy as you guys might think, but it is doable, but you probably shouldn't, but it, you can do it, but you, you probably shouldn't. So the cooling, which in my opinion is the biggest problem with the Aurora R lineup. We've done an entire playlist on this channel where we've done four or five modifications that were relatively quick, easy, and inexpensive, and they have basically made the cooling a completely different rig. Granted, the case is still small. It's bigger than a small form factor, but it is smaller than a mid-tower ATX. It kind of falls somewhere in between, especially with that wedge shape and design. But we've done a couple of modifications for the cooling of this rig. We installed a second 120 millimeter intake fan. We've also changed the thermal pads on the 3080 graphics card on board. There are already heat sinks installed on my motherboard, but if you don't have them, I've gone over extensively where to get them and linked them in the description. And I am already water cooled right from Alienware, right from Dell. But if you went with the air cooled option, I do strongly recommend that you go with the Alienware AIO or a third party AIO or all in one water cooler for the CPU as it is very, very tight in that case. And your CPU fan is literally right up against the PSU or power supply unit. Next up is the size of this bad boy. And I can fully relate with that. I thought this would be a little bit bigger, but I do personally like the shape. And here's my whole mentality on it. You're not gonna be spending more time working on your PC than you are actually gaming, streaming, mining, video editing, uh, music production, whatever it is you do with your workstation slash gaming PC. So for me, that's not a huge deal. And then for looks, I mean, if it's just a color thing for you, as Dell only does offer a white and a black version, there is literally the entire RGB spectrum that you can do on four independently RGB or LED lit sections of the case. But if you don't like the actual case color, if you don't like the case color, you could pop off each panel individually and then paint them or hydro dip them. That is an option. And if you just don't like the looks of it, like I kind of alluded to earlier, why did you pick this particular PC you know, having looked at pictures and videos, seeing what it looks like. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty squeeze a titty. Can you actually swap the R9, 10, 11, or 12, the ones that shared this case right here? Partial swap is very, very easy. So if you're just talking about taking out the GPU and CPU, which are usually the two most expensive components in any PC build, Absolutely. You can also take out the RAM. You can also strip or gut things like the fans, which in stock configuration, there's only 220 millimeter fans. But if you wanted to reuse those in a new case, you could do that. But as for the power supply unit or PSU, for one, it is a lot larger, heavier, and warmer than almost any other PSU system you'll see out there. Not to mention it is uh, mounted on its side on a swivel mechanism and it would take some serious fabrication or modification to get that working in a case. You would probably have to get your own power supply. 
which is kind of a bummer because in some of the higher Alienware uh, R11 and R12 models, R10 as well, when you're building them, this has a thousand watt power supply, which is more than enough juice to power this rig, even while I'm mining and stuff like that. So it's a shame that I would have to scrap that and get a new PSU. And as for the motherboard, this is, this is where you're gonna run into some issues here. And I wanna say this right off the bat, you can make anything work. With enough custom fabrication and jerry-rigging and you know cutting parts and adding braces and mounts, you can definitely make any component fit into any system. However, there are some issues with the motherboard that make it almost virtually just about impossible. And even if you do get it to work, I'm gonna cover at the last section of this video, should you do a full swap or just get a new MOBO and PSU. So getting the motherboard out of this is extremely difficult in comparison to just a regular custom built PC like the one that I came from prior to this R11, which just, just has, um, which just has motherboard standoff screws that hold it in place. This is actually wedged into the chassis. They don't even call this thing a case. They call it a chassis because of the fact that it is a pre-built and everything is meant to stay in there indefinitely. If you have an issue, they want you to send it in and get it fixed that way, primarily because the motherboard is almost part of that chassis. Now, what do I mean by that? It is actually in there extremely well. And I think they also use some kind of an adhesive to get it basically in there to reduce vibration and also, uh, an adhesive that's not going to damage silicon parts and PCBs, the printed circuit board, basically all the circuitry of the motherboard or MOBO. So it's very difficult to get it out without actually breaking or snapping off a part of the motherboard. And if you actually do, and if you actually do get it out, as soon as you unplug that motherboard from the main plug to the chassis, Dell actually bricks or locks that motherboard to where it's not gonna be able to be used until you run a specific script, which is kind of difficult to find on the internet because they think it has been tampered with, that that PC has been stolen and it's being parted out. So as a safety measure, whenever that MOBO has been disconnected from the chassis that it's literally uh, bolted into quite, quite substantial, quite uh, sturdily, then that motherboard is in essence supposed to be unusable. That is per Dell's liking. Now, like I said, there is a script or a code that you can run directly onto the motherboard that basically reflashes it to unlock it. But here's the thing. It is a really crappy motherboard in the R9 through R12, in the entire Alienware Aurora lineup. They are not great motherboards. They only have one NVMe SSD slot. They are PCIe 3.0, not 4.0. The onboard audio encoder is not great. So if you're gonna be using the onboard audio card for things like music production, granted, you're probably gonna plug in a USB soundboard uh, if you're doing any kind of music production with this thing. But if you're just doing audio production, making beats or something with the onboard audio encoder, it's not great. And it also has a lot of limitations built onto the motherboard itself, programmed into it by Dell slash Alienware, such as what RAM sticks you can use. They have a predetermined um, set of RAM that they sell on their website when you're in the builder and whatnot, and you have to use those specific brands. So if you just want to pop in your own 64 gig kit or 16 gig uh, gigabyte kit or whatever you have, you might run into some issues there. So just gutting the GPU, at CPU, maybe you even take the AIO out of there as it is a pretty decent water cooler. You could do that. But when you're talking about taking all the components out, the PSU and the motherboard, they're more hassle than they're actually worth. Which brings me to the final section of this video, and that is, should you case swap your Alienware Aurora R series? And in my opinion, I would say no. For one, I think it looks awesome, and I think that you probably, as a R9 or R12 owner, probably like the looks of this thing as well. And like I said, the size isn't a huge deal. It's actually kind of nice because it fits on my desk substantially smaller than my previous custom mid-tower, which is more room for decorations and stuff on my desk. And the size only comes into effect negatively for me when I'm actually working on it, which I don't plan on doing a whole lot of. I've already changed the thermal pads on my GPU, added an extra fan. I'm gonna upgrade the RAM, and that's about it then unless something breaks and I'm troubleshooting, there should be no reason for me to really pop off that side panel and work on that PC anymore. And then as for the heat, like I said, it's a non-issue. I've done all these mods. I am overclocked to five gigahertz on that 10th gen i7 in there. The 3080 is on its stock clock and runs everything beautifully. I even mine with it. Granted, I run a under voltage and overclock on the VRAM while I am mining Ethereum. That is all done uh, in my mining software in what, what I personally use is nice hash quick miner. I have tried other programs out there um, by the way, if you're into crypto mining with a gaming PC, this is definitely the channel for you as well. But honestly, here's how I see it. It's a crappy motherboard and a decent PSU, a, a, a mid-range PSU and a crappy motherboard. And they're the hardest components to get out. So I would say if you are gonna do a case swap, 
just take the GPU, CPU, maybe the fans, maybe the water cooler out of it, the AIO, pop your RAM sticks out. They're not, uh, and the RAM sticks, to my knowledge, aren't, uh, like any kind of firmware blocked or anything to where they can only be used with that MOBO. It's just that the MOBO itself will only receive certain RAM brands and speeds that Dell authorizes and most importantly sells on their builder. So in conclusion, yes, you could fully case swap this thing if you wanted, but just because you can do something, you can go out and steal a car. Should you? Probably not, but you have free will as a human being. So if you want to put in the time and energy to wedge your motherboard out of there and to take the PSU out and put it on another custom swivel mechanism that you're going to have to weld. Hopefully you're good with TIG, MIG, and spot welding. Uh, you probably weld some kind of uh, brace in there like the chassis has in this then absolutely. But from a more practical standpoint, like I said, take those components out, pop them into a new case with a different motherboard. But for me personally, I'm not gonna be attempting any of that. Could I do it? Sure, I could do the the partial component swap, no problem. I could probably even do the, the MOBO removal, flash it with that script. Um, well, I got a buddy, it's a welder, it runs a machine shop. He could probably make me a custom swivel mount. I could take all the components out of there. It's not worth it. I think it looks gorgeous. I have no problems with the R11, especially now that I made those cooling mods. I have zero cooling issues whatsoever. So for me, I would rather just spend the 50 or 60 bucks and the two to three hours I've invested, probably a little bit more than that because I didn't know what I was doing at first. I'm um, doing the cooling mods that I've done on here and just have a good running PC that I can hold on to for several years. And then save that awesome custom case for my next PC build, which of course will be on this channel. Hopefully I answered your guys' questions. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns about the topic that I covered here today, which I'm sure you guys will have your opinions, drop them in the comment section below. I like to get a little forum, a conversation going on. The community here at Gamer Heaven is very, very active, and there are a lot of Alienware Aurora owners, as well as Alienware laptops, uh, and other Alienware desktop models. We all converse with each other. Hey, sweetie pie. Do you think we should case swap? That was in my mouth. That was in my mouth, literally. Do you think we should case swap? I don't think so. Nope, she said no. If Harley says no, that, that's a definite no, that we're not gonna be case swapping, that it's um it's not practical. She's the voice of reason on this channel. She's also the pretty face, I, so I don't know what I do around here. I guess I just make the content, but if you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more people, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly, greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I do a ton of content around the Alienware Aurora, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, and I also cover a ton of news in the gaming community and industry, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Yeah.